I'm gonna do is uh, cut apples. But as always, you know, I'm gonna have to A, put my hair up. Always got little hair ties here. And then um, wash my hands. And then wear an apron. Okay. And then always wipe down your surface, don't forget, just for sanitation reasons. Even if I'm at home and we all have the same germs there, I always wipe down my counter. Okay, so you just want to keep that as a habit just so that it's sanitary. Okay. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is mix up the mix first because you know when um, apples hit the air, they start to turn, right? So what can I put on the apples to prevent them from turning? Do you guys know? Sapphire, I guess? Okay, so in order to keep them from turning brown, you wanna put some like citrus acidity on them. Okay, so you could do lemons. Um, sometimes there's ascorbic acid that they use as fruit fresh in the store and you just mix it with water and you put your apples in it and just kind of tumble them. And it just keeps them from oxidizing while you're preparing other things and they stay white, okay? Because nobody likes a gross brown apple. I don't, I don't know who does. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mix up the um, the topping first, and then I'm gonna cut my apples up so they don't oxidize before I can get to them, okay? So we're gonna use this bowl. And the first thing we're gonna do is uh, measure a half cup of oats. And with oats, remember they're all different shapes and sizes. So just to um, go in and give it a shake for level is probably gonna be fine, okay? No oat, extra oats ever caused a problem. Okay, and then a half cup of brown sugar. Remember, brown sugar is one of those products that you need to pack in. Um, so it's because it has moisture. And so um, we want to pack it just like the sand at the beach has moisture. So does our brown sugar. So I just usually take it and kind of press it in. And then I might use my leveler. If I can't level it off perfectly, then I'll do that, okay? And that's also gonna go right in here. Okay, and then we're gonna do um, a fourth of a cup of flour. With flour, we always spoon it into the container. So you're just gonna go ahead and spoon that in, making a high little mound, and then taking your leveler and just kind of leveling it off. And go ahead and put that in, okay? Next ingredient, you have to decide. So there are three spices that are similar. So you have cinnamon, you have nutmeg that's a little bit stronger smelling, ginger, um, and so it's one of these. So it's whatever you decide we want in there. So are you guys okay with cinnamon? Is that pretty good? Okay, and then if you ever make it at home, you could do ginger. I mean, if you had didn't have cinnamon, you could use ginger, or if you didn't have ginger, you could use nutmeg. So those are just some alternatives. And so you wanna use a fourth of a teaspoon, so you don't need a ton, and then just use your leveler to level that off. And go ahead and put that in. Okay. And then you will cut in, let's see, let's blend it up with a spoon. We're gonna cut in some butter. I'm just kind of blending it in there. You guys remember when we made a pie crust and we used a pastry blender? Does that ring a bell? Okay, so we're gonna need that again. I'm gonna come over here and try to find my pastry blender. And where are they? Hmm. Okay. 
So your pastry blender, you are going to take your margarine and you are going to cut a fourth of a cup. So one stick is how much? Cup wise? Tablespoon. What is it? Tablespoon. A is whole it? stick is a tablespoon? Oh no, that's not what I meant. Okay. <laughs> what is a whole stick? Half a cup. And I need a fourth. Okay, so if you look on here, it says a fourth of a cup equals four. So you would go one, two, three, four, and you would cut right on that line. And you would go ahead and put your margarine in. And then we're gonna go ahead and pastry blend that in. You'll probably want to grab something just to clean your uh, pastry blender off a couple times. But you're just kind of blending it in so that it's mixed in with the uh, ingredients because this is going to be our topping on the uh, apples. And sometimes I like grab it and bring it up and around like that just to kind of bring the bottom up on top. So, and you can um, do it as much as you want, but it, the more you blend it, it'll become really pasty. And uh, I like mine to be a little bit more crumbly on top than a sludge of paste. So I think this is where I'm gonna stop turning it. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside. Now we need to cut apples. So with our apples, you can do a lot of things to cut apples. Okay, you can use the apple core peeler. Okay, um, I'm gonna have some apples with skin on and some with skin off. So there's gonna be kind of a mixture, but you guys could do whatever at home. But you just take this and you would um, put it in your apple and then just press down like that. And then you're good. Sometimes it gets stuck, so I wouldn't use my fingers because you could cut yourself, but you just want to kind of push it the rest of the way through. And then your apples are apples are already cut for you and cored, which is kind of nice. Okay, so I'm going to use this bowl, I think. All right, so when you do apples, I like to give them a couple more cuts so that they are, um, you know, just a, kind of uh, easy to eat when you're doing your apple crisp. Some people like to take the pan and do like a swirl of apples, you know, to make it look pretty. And you can do that too. Um, I like my apple crisp so that when I go, it's, it's kind of like porridge, so like you're scooping it and able to eat it. You don't have to cut anything up or, you know, prepare it. So um, I'm gonna make mine kind of small. But you could make it really pretty with, um, you know, turning those apples into like a circle kind of like a braid. It would kind of take on that shape as a braid. All right, so I'm just cutting these up. And apples, you know, you can really use what suits you. I mean, Granny Smiths are gonna be kind of sour, so they probably aren't gonna be, um, you know, the best tasting unless you like tart apple crisp, but you might. Um, you know, you can always add sugar if you need to, if they're too tart. But, um, you know, good apples, I think these are galas, which are really sweet. Uh, we have a little project that we're gonna do that talks about all the different kinds of apples. And, uh, you know, some are mild, some are sweet, some are sour. So, um, you know, you'll have to pick which ones you want. Horrocks carries a, a large variety of apples. Um, I like honey crisps. Those are kind of pricey, but they're delicious. And, um, they probably would be really good in an apple crisp, for sure. Okay, another thing you can do is you can cut them in the middle, cut each side, and then use your hand to manipulate the blade enough to cut out the core. So I'm just cutting the core away. And then again, you're going to uh, quarter them and then um, make them small enough to go into your bowl. 
Now I will be putting some sugar on my apples to kind of break them down. So during the cooking process, that sugar kind of helps uh, break down the, um, um, the white part of the apple. And that way they're not super crisp. Um, you can also do um, applesauce in the microwave. Just uh, put your apples in there, heat them up, smash them down, and you have a ready-made, easy, fast applesauce that you can make at home. So there's that as well. If you don't like the peel, I kind of like it because it gives it a little color. But, you know, some apple skins are at more edible than others. And so you'll have to decide for yourself like what suits your fancy with that. But you can always take a peeler, like a vegetable peeler, and you can just peel away the uh, skin. And then you don't have to worry about having the skin be part of your apple crisp, but that's something that doesn't, you know, you don't like it. So just a quick uh, vegetable peeler works really well. They're a little slippery because <laughs> they get sweat. And again, I'm just going to go ahead and cut that so it's really fast and easy for me to uh, put in there. And I'm just going to cut the center and then I'm just going to go like this to put it in a little bit faster. Okay, so coring them and then cutting down the middle. Brady, are you on your demo page? Okay checking. All right, so just core them out, cut down the center, hold them in your hand, and then just go ahead and cut. We got two more to go. Okay, I'll show you another way you can cut apples. You can cut around the core. So I can just go on the outside of where the core would be cutting around it okay and then doing the same thing just cutting in half and then go ahead and just cube it out try to keep them all about the same size stretch here. We got one more to go. Okay. And this one I'm going to peel again just so I have a couple peeled and a couple not. sugar, which I believe is two tablespoons, two to four. So typically what you'll do is you will, um, let me grab a fork here. You want to taste them first. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Mm, delicious. Okay. <laughs> so because they're pretty sweet, I'm going to do probably three tablespoons. So I'm going to take it and just shake it across. I thought that was a teaspoon. I was like, what? I guess I just need three more. So, one, two. Okay. And then I just kind of mix them up like this. 
Take a little butter just to make sure that it's not going to stick. Move your fingers around, get them in the crevices here. Okay. And then, let me get all this out of the way. Take your apples and dump them in. Okay. Get them around there. And then you're going to take your topping. And just kind of take it and just evenly place it around. You could also use the same topping for um, a pie. It's called a crumble top. Instead of having the uh, pastry top, you could just do a crumble top instead of having that pastry on there. And then it's going to go in the oven at 375 for about 30 minutes to soften up those um, apples. And you just simply take a fork and put it into the apple. If it gives and goes through without coming back at you, it's good to go. But if, the, if, you, if you spork the apple and you pull the apple out, it probably means it's not soft enough. Okay, so that's a good indicator. What temperature did you uh, 375 for 30 minutes. I'm good, Logan, you can stop. 